All right, we've got game two. Game one was an absolute slaughter. Uh, cameraman is absolutely going to highlight Garen here. This is, I believe, the first time Garen has ever been picked in Korea. Um, I think Korea has played every single champion except Garen at some point or another. I think this is the first Garen. Now, we've, we've spoken about it on release when we were testing all of Kasante. What could Kasante do? Uh, and who are the counterpicks? Garen and Shogath are the two main counter picks, all right? Garen dealing enough damage and not being susceptible to the control that Kisante has. Garen can just kind of shrug it off. Uh, plus, anytime that you go all out, both of those champions have executes on their R that can punish you for using that button. So uh, absolutely love the counter pick here. It's also right in Adam's wheelhouse. So you're absolutely going to let people pick Kisante. Uh, anytime that you have Karen in your champion pool. Now, this is something that everyone can do well. All right, let's pause for a moment and talk about this. Alkai should Q right here. He doesn't want to use his Q. All right, one, one minion to the advantage. Now, this is really important because we have pushing lanes from everyone on Golden Guardians. They have Callista, Talia, and Cassante. So they have the push, which means that this standoff can't like Belveth is allowed to do this this that said check it out. oh my gosh all right this is worth pausing for if nothing happens this favors Maokai because Maokai is better on low economy than Belveth is Belveth needs to springboard get as many plays up ahead needs to develop a lead needs to be a threat so Maokai on low econ is willing to just literally stand here this is something that we don't see at the pro game enough where people are just willing to be patient just like, yeah, okay, this favors me. I don't need to outplay you. I don't need to do anything. Let me just stand here. And Shio doing that gives me tons of inspiration for this team uh, that they are very confident. They're like, okay, we've got counter picks. Garen is going to smash Cassante. Azir is going to outcarry Talia. We have Ezreal to outcarry Callista. If nothing else happens and Belveth is not part of this game, we're going to be fine. All right, they've got the pushing lanes. We're just going to scale. Belveth isn't going to get anything done. I'm totally happy with this. I'm good, man. It's worlds. It's worlds time. So I'm pumped. You see how Shio is not using his Q, by the way? It's because he wants to save, wants to make sure that that Q gets all of the damage in. Belveth will win the fight if they go for an all out fight. So Shio's just trying to bide time, bide time. There we go. The emote game is coming out. He's got the ward on his head. So there's nothing coming out. He's just going to show, like, hey, I'll, I'll do this. I'll stand here with you all day long because this works for me. Now looking at the rest of the composition, Nico Callista is something that we've that we've seen. Uh, there are ways to synergize the the ultimates that make it very difficult to defend against the Nico ultimate. That said, it's a ton of investment if you're pressing two R buttons for engage from that position. So generally, you're going to want to use Nico as like counter engage or hidden engage with the you know minion tricks and all the things that you can do with her. Uh, and then get her out and maybe come back in is more likely. Uh, very difficult to find a window where you want to throw her in against Rakan, Maokai, and Garen. Ooh, that is clutch. Now, this is important. River saying, all right, we've got the push. I'm going to take my lead, and I'm going to put it in your face. The fact that Maokai was able to smite that camp was a big, big deal. Because if he does not hit level 2, then River will run away with this game. That said, we do have a tremendous advantage here. This is a this is a big lead for Belveth, getting in the face of the Maokai. All of these spellcasters have a huge weakness. They do not fight well, especially because their base adaptive force is AP. So when it comes time for auto attacking and trading, you're going to be missing out on 14 damage potentially per hit. Yes, you got one one spell that does a little bit more, but once that spell's on cooldown, uh, what are you actually what are you actually offering? Now we're going to see whether or not Belveth decides to go back in the face of the Maokai. It looks like Maokai has gone over, taken red, and come back over to top. Now the reason that they started red, normally you wouldn't do that. You would take Krugs into red because you want the respawn to come up. But the reason he's doing red first is because Raptors is going to respawn sooner anyways. So you're just going to create this Krugs into Raptors uh, relay that you can do. Also you have to make sure to secure that red before Belveth gets back in your face. Now, I don't like that River actually took his foot off the pedal. He's he's actually slowed down, gone for a full clear from here. 
River smiting there. Smiting now is level three, not level four. Most of the way to four is still one camp away. May decide that there's a little bit of pressure, but I expect a oh, recalling cannot be right here. Okay, I really, I really despise that that recall from River. Not taking Gromp is limiting your ability to get farm, not only this round for the, your shop right here, which should be the difference between getting an extra dagger um, if they're deciding to build. Oh, uh oh, oh no. Oh, this is not what you want. All right, Shio's coming in at level three. Now this, this was a misplay with the level up timers. Alois would be ecstatic about this. Cassante almost 1v2ing because they hit level six. And a good roam by Gory. All right, so well played. We were talking so much about River. We missed that. We missed that opportunity. So Licorice using the fact that they hit level six and going for the immediate all out in the only window of the game. So you see this, how we have a push going in and Garen saying, I'm going to fight it right now. See how those four minions are still alive, but by just a smidge, if Garen's E had stayed in that minion wave, he'd hit six and he'd be able to just throw his ultimate at Cassante and win. But because he had to go out and because Adam actually kind of, kind of took the super risky way again, now almost dies to the licorice W anyways, uh, ends up drawing Gory's, um, Gory's wall, the ultimate to, to get the kill. And it still ends up dying. But you see that level up timer, how important it is to get that level up spike. Licorice plays it to perfection, knows that because he's got a crashing wave that he will hit his level up timer first. And that will be the one and only time that he can actually use it for his advantage the entire game. That said, now that he's shopped, all right, and we have 1900 gold in inventory compared to 1100 from items besides the starter items. Uh, Cassante's going to feel ecstatic. He's going to feel really, really good in this matchup now. So Adam is now going to be relegated. Adam's going to be relegated to uh, just playing farm. He can't, he's lost his tempo in this lane. Cassante will be strong enough with that much of a gold lead. Um, basically, that's the break point in pro. It, in some counter matchups, you can play through a 1,000 gold deficit, but most of the time, as you approach that 1,000 gold, ooh, Adam, a bit of a misclick. As you approach 1,000 gold, uh, you can no longer play into lanes. Now, this is something that Adam does that no one else does. This is a way that I want the game to be played. High tempo. He actually made a couple mistakes there. What's happening? We have a little bit of a rubber band. Timer's going. All right. I think I remember this on cast. They said they were having some slingshot, some rubber band issues. But using tempo in one lane to create effects in another. That being said, this is a lower level Garen, and this is a way that you can get more resources. You can create more experience for yourself. You can create more gold by being all over the map. The problem is that you're lower level right now. And so you're not necessarily going to get all of the advantages that you want. You might become susceptible. Phase Rush and Garen, though, ends up getting out of all of these sticky situations, even with a couple misplays. Just Garen things, folks. Oh, look at that last hitting. It's just very precise. Has the upgraded boots. That's why you can run away from champions like Belveth, even when they have the Q. This is, I mean, this is super exciting to watch. He is playing this to the limit, still down 24 CS and losing resources, but still getting more than potentially might have, right? Like you, you could easily be so countered here that you just stop being able to function. Oh no, licorice. Hmm, you cannot afford to die there. When you are snowballing your lead, it is so important that you stay alive. There might have even been shutdown gold. I forgot to check whether or not shutdown was available. There should be based on the three plates, the 24 CS, the 22 CS and the level advantage. There should have been a shutdown available, which means that Garen's going to slingshot uh, some of their items up. Also the experience that you get for that kill. So getting up to level seven, we'll see how he's able to survive. Again, he's still behind. Uh, and especially once we have the completed Iceborne Gauntlet, which we have right now, this is unplayable for Garen, but can you squeeze out the maximum? Can you get every last resource? Uh, can you create dirty farm, you know, by slipping away? 
the fact that you die here, it's, it's just unnecessary. You do not need to get these kills to exacerbate this lead. You need to stay alive. That is the most important thing you can do is staying alive to ensure that you have permanent uptime for your resources, your gold, and your experience intake. All right, taking tally, we've got a 2K gold lead. We've been talking a lot about Garen. Uh, BDS has actually managed to get themselves a couple of very deep wards. Um, they have created the base for the triangle. If you look right here on the, on the map, they've got these two and then the one long over here. So what you're doing is you're creating a, an avenue where this area you can actually control with derivative vision. Most paths that would get you here behind the pit you will see, and in fact, anyone who goes to Krugs to Red, you'll see. If they go to Red anywhere, you'll see it. If they go Raptors, you'll see it. So by warding all the way back here, you ensure that you have knowledge about when and how this dragon is going to be taken. I expect BDS, knowing that they're down full item on top lane, uh, and seemingly they should be down more than that in, or not more than that, but they should also be down in bot lane. They should not contest this dragon take. But this will probably be the last time that they have to forego Dragon. Maybe they have to go one. But remember, Belveth spent a lot of time in the early game trying to just tempo out the Maokai to the point where they're at the same level again as the carries. But they're not in and of themselves particularly strong. Okay, That Belveth is not going to be strong enough to just solo this thing. We have a very late, you know, normally jungle... Jungle champions are often the first ones to finish their mythics because they just go straight there. They don't need to buy laning items like Dorn Shield. Uh, you know, that, that said, they buy a jungle item, so it's kind of some of this, some of that. But they don't need to rush boots the way that, that top laners do as much. Oh my gosh, who he... Did nuke... All right, I don't think this was a counting minions thing because when you move up... When you move up like that, when there's no wave... The minions normally collide right at the middle of mid. If there's a minion coming slightly earlier, you know it's an eco. All right. That also said, your normal pattern might be drop my W, throw it into the minion wave, and start CSing. That could have been nuke just being like, oh, it's a Nico. Let me shuffle in and, and push out. But more than likely, it was, oh, this minion's further up than it should be. I'm going to just engage on it and throw it under my turret. Uh, so huge heads up play by Nuke. Uh, something that can also happen, and I despise that this is a thing, but it is definitely a thing. Crowd noise can make it through microphones. And I guarantee you at that moment that there's going to be a, oh, from the crowd as they're like eager in anticipation. That's the one thing that holds back Nico in international play. The crowds are much more hyped. And when they're hyped, they care about the results. They're going to notice and they're going to exclaim when something interesting is happening. And when the other team has a Nico on it, you're just like, okay, I know what the interesting thing is. Crowd's going crazy, then there must be a Nico nearby that will remind you to look for it. Maybe Nuke is just on his game and like recognize again that that minion was like stepped up to here rather than to here. That little difference can be enough to see that it's time to go, but I bet it's a combination of all of those factors. Very, very interesting. All, all of the plays that will be available with Nico um, will certainly be fascinating, but yeah, right there. You see how far up that, that minion was? The minion wave collided right here when it should have been further back. I think that was probably number one, but the crowd noise almost definitely alerted Nuke to look for it. So we've had, unfortunately, GG, despite cultivating over a 2k gold lead for themselves, has thrown away two free deaths. Cassante dying in top. Hey, uh, we won't call it free, but the Nico just, just dead. You know, there's nothing, they got nothing out of that. There's no, nothing that they can claim as an advantage for that. But we still have three and a half K. What else can they do? One of the things that you we will mention, if you are a Nico and you're hiding as a minion, use a click. A click to the point where the minion waves meet. That is the one and only way to make your movement 
perfectly unpredictable. But like we said, if the minion wave meets in a unique place, it's still going to it's still going to tell. But if you're like a caster, for example, you walk up and you block one of you block the fourth one or the third one, and you become the new third one, for example, and or you just become the fourth one. Yes, they can count. But if it's not necessarily always obvious, and if it's an extra thing to think about, it's an extra thing to think about. If you a click, then you will move up and you will behave like a minion. You will move in a in a straight line. You won't make the human thing of moving side to side of oscillating. And that way you can disguise yourself just that little bit more. And sometimes, especially at the highest level, that little bit is all it takes. Malachi using flash to get away from Cassante. Well used. Good squeeze. Belveth, Herald, ultimately important. They should be able to get this for free. This is over 3K and they have completed items. That said, we have completed items across the board. So some of the gold lead has not been manifested. So we'll see if we get some sort of contest here. Nico going forward. Okay, but what are you doing now? Let's just pulling them out. Azir's doing a ton of damage here. I feel like they have some unspent gold here. If you looked at if you looked at the and the menu across, they picked this fight without all of their gold spent. It seems like because look at this, we have completed boots and Landry's matched. We have Triforce, Blade of the Rune King. Okay, you're down. You're down in Berserker's Greaves. We have uncompleted items from both supports. We have completed item again, just completed boots on two champions is the only difference that they can claim besides that Iceborne Gauntlet, and that so you really only have a ha a half item. Not even a completed item um, across the board. 3K should be good, but it feels like they didn't have all that money spent. And now, you know, the good news is they got the Herald. Belveth is a different champion when she has Herald. She's, you know, it's so, so important for that champion to get, um, get that buff. Make sure that you can go up and push. Now, let's see how she uses it. They did have first recall. Uh, and they had an opportunity to get on the map right now and Belveth instead opted to use that opportunity to use that tempo in the jungle to take a camp in red uh, Which means that we're, we don't have the remora the remora are not on the map She's not getting any extra presence from from that passive Also, we have a very defensive build here, which you know kind of makes sense if heavily heavily This uh, this damage profile is heavily Magic oriented. You do have Ezreal Qs are going to be hitting a lot, but the rest of his spells are all magic. Azir, heavy magic damage. Malkai, 100%. Rakan, 100%. So I don't mind the Merc Treads and going Stridebreaker to be just a little bit tankier. Wait, I missed how they missed... How did they lose second dragon? What happened that allowed two dragon to the second dragon to go off? Because that was a huge part of them cementing this lead. Belveth does have infinite scaling, but she does fall off because in these fights, if it takes, you know, the second one Garen gets on you, you do die. Oh my goodness. There we see the power of Phase Rush. Phase Rush out maneuvering a Callista. Now that's fascinating because does that mean that all Phase Rush juggernauts are just counterpicks to Callista? I don't think quite. I think, I think Garen is going to be the exception because of how fast he is and how threatening he is. The fact he can deal damage while he's moving is a big process here. That is huge that Garen's able to get that for himself. Absolutely enormous. And you see, Garen is actually climbing back, right? We saw at one point it was about 28 CS that they were down. And now it's just 20 getting himself resources, finding kills, using Ignite plus Ultimate to kill a Callista. Callista was one of the big uh, resource leads that they had. Oh, it was a step forward. Stixa stepped forward, thinking that they were pushing Garen off of the wave, but instead that one dash forward as Garen went forward meant that they couldn't get away. Um, something else worth noting, this Blade of the Rune King, Normally, I mean, Blade of the Rune King into Rage Blade totally makes a lot of sense, but so does Immortal Shield Bow. And Immortal Shield Bow allows you to play hyper aggressively as as the Callista, and would have gotten him away of that situation. Even even Bork the slow won't get you away from Garen because Garen will be able to 
Turn that off. What a dodge by River. Well played. Oh, flash. Oh, flash into E. Beautifully done by Nuke to get out. Oh my goodness. There's no way you survive. I don't know that he needed to juke that much at the very end of that, but fancy feet to even get that far. Ends up drawing flash from Belveth. And look at the, the payoff, right? What does BDS get in return? When one of your champions is getting dove, what are you getting on the other side of the map? Rakan's able to get a couple uh, deeper wards in here, secure some vision. They are now clearing out vision from their northern quadrant. Everything's going to start uh, revolving around this Baron. As the Belveth, you absolutely want this. Talia's got the Burn. You've got Bork. You've got Leandries. You've got Belveth. So you're you're absolutely covered on your damage for Baron. Not only that, but Belveth is, like we said, a different champion when she kills the Void Beasts. She truly becomes the Queen of the Void every time that that comes up. So we're going to see a lot of this vision moving around into the into the western and northern quadrant. You're trying to secure as much vision in the enemy side of the map, right? You want to see their movements up and to the objective. You don't necessarily need to see the objective. You'd like to have one kind of occult ward. Uh, often you see that ward, you know, hidden right here just outside the pit or right here just on the edge of this wall that won't be seen by traditional sweepers or control wards. You force the enemies to spend some time uh, putting more sweepers out. That's especially important now that the sweepers have been changed. And it's a little bit harder to have your sweeper active for that long. Yes, you can save up charges, save up your two charges, come to the river and say, all right, I'm using, I'm expending both of these charges, but it's very much a team effort now. You need to bring a second person to get this. Ooh, Rakan going deep. Using the W, was that a failed flash? Yeah, all right, that was flash. Shorted the flash, but was still able to get the W to go off. Get right to the wall, maximize that distance. Would have preferred, obviously, to get all the way out. Surprised that it wasn't W into flash. Maybe just didn't want to have the travel time align with the Belveth W. All right, let's see if Garen's actually that much stronger. All right, we have a cooldown down. Dodges, no, we got hit by the Q. Still losing, right? Can't, you know, can't be understated. That until this Black Cleaver is done, Garen's not going to be a match still for Cassante. And it looks like we're going to have Force of Nature matching in. Force of Nature, like we said, heavy magic damage profile. You have the Iceborne that is going to slow down some of the mobility of Rakan, Ezreal, Azir, even Garen to an extent. Uh, plus countering the Garen damage. But the rest of the kit is probably going to be towards MR, especially after that Sunfire. Might even argue that Cassante over-indexed on this matchup on the counter. Um, the Sunfire is mostly for lane pushing. You already have that naturally in the kit. You can survive with just Bami Cinder. I would have preferred to see Bami Cinder into Force of Nature and then maybe fourth item complete the Bami's. Um, but opted for the Sunfire, said he could hold on to this lead in top lane for longer. Does have a 26 CS lead. Garen is just dutifully going side to side. You see how he's doing this? Side to side, keep it pushed, keep it pushed, keep it pushed. I am not letting you close to my base. Azir and Garen, they're making this game as long as possible. They're just saying, let's go back and forth, side to side, make sure that you can't have any pressure. Ezreal's just going to sit in mid and push up these lanes and never really give a window. Now, speaking of windows, we have Dragon 3 being taken. This is the last time that BDS can... Uh, Give up something for free, although soul they don't really care about when it when it's especially this soul. The big chemtech soul. The big difference is the map. It's less about the dragon soul buff, uh, but you will notice the tenacity difference if we start getting into like whether or not you get locked down by a Rakan charm uh, or a Maokai. Especially as you get lower health, you may be able to avoid that. Uh, but Garen actually is one of the favorite champions, probably alongside maybe Renekton, but Garen might be number one of the champion that loves this map the most. Why? Because of all the speed buffs, all of the extra mobility that you get jumping over walls. It solves a lot of Garen's problems. Not only that, but Garen is already going to be running Celerity. So every time that one of those Scryer Blooms goes off, every time that you pass over one of the 
uh, juicy fruits, you are going to be activating that celerity and getting extra buffs. Oh, check that out. Who? I don't think this is going to work because of Malkai. Malkai is going to be throwing around his saplings a little bit too often. I actually don't know that interaction. I don't know. You can let me know in the comments if you know. Will a sapling... Will a sapling actually uh, trigger and see who he there? I think they're moving. Oh, there's the sapling. Okay. Interesting. Did it just fizzle? No, it looks like that was just a uh, spectator bug. It's it's there on the mini map. Yeah, if you know, make sure you let me know in the comments. Uh, will will token do all of the tokens do it? Will will the sapling bite it? Will a Heimerdinger turret go after it? I imagine no, but I actually don't know. I don't know. Now let's see, mid lane prio. That's the name of the game. They can have Ezreal and Azir here. Uh, very long range. This is a problem of the Golden Guardians comp. Everything's fairly short range. Even Talia wants to get to some extent a little bit close enough to be able to catch you with the slowing field on the rocks. But the rest of the team, Belveth needs to get up close. Callista gets up close. Cassante literally gets in your face. Uh, and how are you ever going to approach this sapling Azir Ezreal army? Um, I don't think that they've generated enough of a gold lead for themselves. We're going to see what, what it is. I, I wish they would keep the inventory up. All right, can they keep you in? They're walling people off. Maokai ultimate being used in return. Now, they're actually staying in the pit. This is going to force the issue. Callista's going off against the Garen. Now, it, does Garen have flash? No, flash had been used. Maokai actually secures the Baron. Let's see how many people die for it. Whether, oh, there we go. It's a step in from 6A. He's going for the kill, which means he's absolutely going to die to Garen. Another misplay. And Gar oh my god. Garen's just cleaning up these fights. Rakan with the Q gets the kill onto Cassante. Now look at the vision. Look at, I mean, 6A. I'm going to say demonstrably misplayed. Is still undervaluing Garen. This is something that niche picks and pocket picks can do your opponents likely have zero game experience against it or if it's and probably zero in pro probably zero in practice and probably very little in solo queue as well because garen's seen as kind of a kind of a scrub champion it's been overstated for a long time all right and there are strengths and specifically against Cassante, very, very solid into that matchup. Happy to just like take these long fights. But you see Stixay looking for a kill. What's he trying to get? That's a Rakan. Why are you inting for a Rakan? That makes no sense. He's just not putting any respect to the fact that that is a celerity phase rush Garen that is in your face and will kill you. I don't know if they'll be able to get back from this. This uh, They're going to have 5,000 gold from that, which is going to catapult them into the gold lead. They're going to take their recalls, expect them to push up mid, maybe bot, but probably just mid and get these deep wards. Garen is a immovable object. Who on Golden Guardians can actually move this Garen? I don't think that anyone can. He's got his Black Cleaver, so he's going to have the move speed boost. If he ever gets onto someone, the combination of Auto Q, Stride Breaker, Black Cleaver, his E, and Celerity means that he's going to be moving about 700 move speed, okay? He's going to be moving about the speed of a Rakan Dash at all times once fights start. And if that's allowed to happen, you can't exist as a Callista. How, how, you, your kiting no longer works. So once these fights start, Garen is just going to completely counter the Callista kit. Now, as you're going in on the back side of the wall, you see how Red Team has uh, controlled vision in the southern quadrant. Uh, I do like Golden Guardian's move here, which is to go up through mid and say we can pick this fight. But this is really their last chance. Now, this is a huge spectator bug. I believe that this happened live. And sometimes they just went over to the theater view it's really kind of obnoxious hopefully this is not going to plague them through all of the tournament i like their answer again taking their shot it's important to take your shot but that said azir up 20 cs ezreal out outscaled the Callista. garen it's not it's weird to say outscaling the cassante because cassante is still going to be that brick wall but because cassante finished this bomby cinder he's Instead, sorry, he's finished Sunfire. That means he has a completed Sunfire rather than a completed Gargoyle. 
and he's not going to be able to tank as much as he needs to to swing this fight. I like that they take the fight, they stack up, Garen's waiting for his moment, he's basically peeling the whole team just by existing, right? And you see that they get the kill, they solidify, they get Cassante for themselves, they end up spending all their effort to kill Adam, but he effectively zoned the entire team so that the rest of the team could take that pick. They get the soul, but in a way, yeah, you, you know, I will say Guard Golden Guardians does want the soul. There are rare occasions where you do not want the soul in play. Right, you do not want to give. Let's say, let's say you're the scaling team, and somehow you ended up with three dragons. You just don't want that. You don't want the soul. You want to let the game go longer. Every every dragon that spawns is another five minutes on the game clock, and the stats that it gives are nothing compared to what you gain in five minutes with that lead and what you can do. Um, but this being said, you ha you have Callista on your team uh, to an extent, Belveth. You just want to get the power now, and you're going to try to go for an all-out fight at Elder uh, is the most likely situation. Garen's getting scarier and scarier. You're going to have Force of Nature, which isn't going to proc that much. I don't know if I like Force that much. It's, it's probably just the next iteration. You saw that he prioritized the move speed. Uh, he might even just go pieces of, of this and go for Hullbreaker, which is more like a solo queue build. I don't expect that to be the case. That's very much a, like, I'm here, I'm standing my ground and holding this much space. I don't expect to be that. I expect it to be Force, and I don't think it's going to be that great of a spike for him. There's very few sources of magic damage here. It's mostly for the Talia, but that said, Talia does have slowing effects. She's able to... Uh, create ground that is a little bit harder for Garen to get through. He can break his own slows. But he is going to hit, like we said, that critical mass of move speed in the middle of these fights. All right, now dra uh, Baron's up in 48 seconds. We want to get mid prio and we want to get vision on their quadrant. So that means GG is looking for northern quadrant vision and BDS is looking for western quadrant vision. vision. There's nothing. They don't care about the dragon. Three minutes away, there's nothing to be done here. Uh, Cassante can go split push this lane. You're going to notice that Garen has to be very meticulous with his movements because they are lacking the uh, teleport. Now, it looks like we might have a fight. We've got Talia wall into Cassante all out, but they dash. They fully disengage. <sighs> that was probably a huge window to try to create the fight that they wanted. They probably needed to work a little bit harder to make that happen. Now we're going to end up with a standoff. Garen is going to fight to obliterate this wave. No, he's actually not even casting his E. Saving. Saving his cooldowns, not even auto-attacking. Prioritizing keeping the dead man's plate passive available so that he has all this extra move speed. As long as you don't use that auto, you're always going to have that proc plus 100 speed. And you see him. He's just, he's just making himself known. He actually prefers to be seen here to heighten the, the heart rate of Stix A. Right? Get seen. It's not even about being hidden. Oh my goodness. All right. GG does not even get this fight off. And River's getting poked. GG. Maokai with a W flash. They're going to get the pick. Nico dies for free. River dies for free. This is just going to be the end of the game. Now, you tried to take Maokai here, but like, what does this actually accomplish? That was a full health Cassante using everything, so he got very little of his kit. It takes forever to kill the Maokai here as well. Rest of team can get into position. Garen's bringing up the wave. You have four versus three on this push, uh, plus the Baron minions means that they're easily going to get the inhibitor here. Now, if any kind of fight breaks out, now this is a situation where GG cannot look to fight, and you're going to see Adam go up. Yeah, there he goes. Flash forward. Oh, my goodness. Trying to get that huge chunk. Rakan interrupting the dash by Talia. Well done. Knocking her off and they go up, they press. Wow, they this is really impressive. All right, I love this play by BDS. This is the sort of thing that we saw from them in spring. Pressing up and taking the maximum, knowing that you can do it, right? Saying we're 4v3, we've got the super strong Garen. They can't face off. They don't have two of their champions. This is enough to end, and we are strong enough on three and four items to go end the game. So really, really well played. Uh, BDS, I mean, if GG can't win that game, this is not looking very good. But BDS is looking great. All right, BDS is looking like a team that's going to be able to contend. Mm -hmm.